Good morning. I'm going to start off by reading Isaiah 53. I think it puts us in context for the rest of what I'm going to talk about today. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The word of God for the people of God. I come to you today even though I opened up with Isaiah, throughout the Bible, particularly in the New Testament, we have the story of the shepherd and his sheep. And God put it on my heart to preach out of the book for the first time, for me, I think, if I can remember. And I guess I've, I preached out of Daniel and I preached out of Revelation, as a matter of fact, both whole books. But for some reason, I've always kind of dodged Ezekiel, and if you if you read the first 32 chapters, you'll probably understand why, because it's very, uh, it's very heavy. It's a lot of judgment and prophecy about Judah and what's going on with them in Babylonian captivity and how, how God judged them for what they've been doing wrong. Um, as a matter of fact, it follows the book of Lamentations and you could say that really it just continues to be a time of lament. But when you get to chapter 33, I think I, think I got to the point where I understand why God wanted me to preach on this on this subject. Um, right now, the world is is in a mess, and uh, the circumstances are so unusual and different than what we're used to. And, and what I would say uh, that we need to understand is that our God is a God of circumstances. He puts us in situations that allows us to to grow closer to Him, to change, to, to direct us, and to guide us. And in some cases, it also creates situations where people turn away from God. And, and my, uh, I think the reason God put this message on my heart today is because it's also a time where people who are shepherds could mislead people. People are really needy right now. People have a lot of unanswered questions. People are reaching out for the first time ever to churches across the country and and not only to, not only to churches but maybe uh, other leaders in their lives and, and God places a high value on people who lead people and I, and I think it's very important as we that I point out some things that I believe and, and they're going to probably offend some people and that's okay I'm not here to win friends and influence people other than for God and one of the, one of the things I'd like to talk about and we're going to talk about it at length today is what is the job of a shepherd? You know, the, the word pastor and the word shepherd are equally interchangeable. They're exactly the same meaning. And so we do understand that, that sheep that would, uh, would unfortunately would fall into trouble if they did not have a good shepherd, did not have someone to lead them. But, but right now, the world is falling apart and, and in some ways, I believe there is a, a famine, as it says in Amos, I believe it's chapter 8. There's a famine for the Word of God to be preached to people. People need to hear God's Word. And there's nothing worse than for a preacher to get up and just give his opinion on everything and what's going on. And, I, and we all are, are human, and so we do that sometimes. But we need to be able to back it up with the Word of God. So I think about um, the message this morning and, and also about how important it is that we are good leaders and, and the responsibility we're held to. Um, one of the things that God's put on my heart, and this is going to sound kind of strange, is a whole lot of P words. And, uh, and it really comes down to, are people, are the leaders 
following God's plan, God's purposes, and, and are they living into all that He is trying to do? Um, God has, supplies provision for people. And I know that uh, right now the, a lot of denominations are struggling and falling apart because they've gone the way of the world. And it's interesting because the, the fight to, to maintain these denominations seems to be all about maintaining property and pension plans instead of maintaining the gospel. And that's horrible that, that it's come to that. But then there are others who deceive people just to take their money from them. There's another side to that that are, I guess they prophesy for profit. Their, their whole purpose in life is to lead people to give to them so they can be personally, can gain personally. And so there's some great warnings in the next, in these two chapters, chapters 33 and chapters 34, and a great description of what a pastor should look like and lead and, and, and his role in the church. And so I pray that I can pull something out of this this morning that would, that would be useful to everyone out there. I'm not exactly sure why God put this on my heart this morning to speak on this, but evidently there's somebody out there who needs to hear this. And, and as I said, most of the time I'm preaching to myself. And so how fitting it is that I'm preaching to myself about pastors. So let us pray. I dearly Father, we thank you for our time here this morning. We thank you for your word. And Lord, I just ask you that you would bless all that we do this morning, that we would understand, you know, what your point was for us, what we need to hear, that the words would come from my lips that you want me to say, Lord. And I know, Lord, we, we're struggling so much right now. There's so much need in the world. And, and, and I do want people to be comforted in this, in this time. But I also understand, Lord, that you allow things to happen so that people would, would take notice of you. You allow things to happen so people would repent and return to you. And I know uh, in some ways that may be the grand message, the grand design of what's happening right now, that we would all turn around and look to you for everything that's going on in the world and, and, and reach out to you and help you to hopefully that you would guide us and lead us, Lord. And, and I know that uh, we don't like to think about those things in that kind of way, but there's never been a greater opportunity for people to draw close to you than right now in my lifetime. And Lord, I just ask you to bless those that try, that you would, that you would reach out to them and guide them with your Holy Spirit and lead them to you. And I know that, and I hope that my words this morning, what, for whatever use you have of them, Lord, that they would be used. Lord, let this message do what it was intended to do, Lord. And I just ask you to bless me as I deliver it. Humble me, Lord, and help me to understand that it is you that does all things and I am nothing. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, to get back to the story of Ezekiel, I'm going to turn over there, chapter 33. And the very first thing we see in chapter 33 is the story of one of the roles, I believe, of a pastor is to be a watchman. And it says, in, starting in chapter 33, verse 1, Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning. If the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes the warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn away from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. So what that's saying is, as a pastor, when I see people living in ways that God questions, when I see people facing harm and I don't step up and say something, then I'm equally liable 
under God for what the outcome would be. There are many people, per, churches today and persons today, particularly pastors, who preach a weak form of the gospel. They no longer push people to repent. They no longer demand that people live to a certain lifestyle. They no longer require that people would honor what God's word says about the things of this world. Instead, they choose to edit out the parts that are a little too tough, the parts that might offend someone. And that's not who God calls pastors to be. We're supposed to be that one who's watching, ever watching to protect the flock. And I, and I feel bad because I know at times I've, I've not been one who's totally stood in the right ways and, and, and also just didn't stand firm as I should have. And Lord, I just ask you to forgive me for that and give me the opportunity to, to reach people who, who need to know that the way they're living and the, what they're doing is not the way they should be living. Lord, the, the gospel message has been so watered down the last few years by so many just to put people in the seats, to make mega churches and do all these things. But that's not who you called us to be as pastors. You called us to tell the truth in spite of what's going on in the world. And Lord, I just thank you that you've given me the opportunity to do so. Lord, this, tonight, this morning I just know that we have so many folks that need to hear the truth of the gospel. And every pastor out there who shortcuts the message, who adds to the God's word, to, who, who lessens uh, the truth of the message in some way, who, who makes it smooth it over a little bit or whatever to make it more palatable, is only fooling himself, but more so he's fooling those who are listening to his message. So Lord, I ask you right now, as we go across the world with this, with this internet thing where we can actually have messages from all of the world people, that, that people's spirit, the spirit would guide them and they would be able to discern when they hear a message that's not true. And they would learn to, to, to love and to trust and, to, and more than anything, to read God's word for themselves so they would be able to live into who he called them to be and to understand that the times are coming when false prophets and false messages will come. And you know, it's just sad that we're in this in the situation that we're in. I just wanna step out there for just a second and explain the watchmen. We, we are all in some ways watchmen for our children, watchmen for our families, we're watchmen for our coworkers. We are all called to be people who step in and protect and save people from a spiritual level on down to a physical level. Lord, just help us to be those people. Now, the story continues in chapter 34. Well, let me stop for a minute. I'm gonna go back to chapter 33. Now, there's a lot of responsibility on the pastor, but I want you to hear for just a moment one of the greatest problems we have today. And this has gone over in Ezekiel 33 and verse 30, starting in that section. There are people who on Sunday morning will amen and God bless and do all those things when I preach and what I do and what I say, and they're all in. They agree 100%. They, when you say amen, you are in agreement. But to give lip service and, live, and give an amen on Sunday morning and to go out and live in the world is not what God is calling you to do. Here's, listen, listen to these, these verses. This is, in some ways, this is God's response also for those in the, in the pews. Verse 30, as for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and indoors of the houses, and they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, please come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. In other words, they're fired up. Come listen to what this preacher's got to say. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. And when this comes to pass, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. What that saying is, is when I tell you the truth of Scripture and you say amen and you get it and you hear it, but you don't take it to heart and you don't live it, God is saying that those words that come out of His Word will come to pass at some point. And you, you knew better. God knew that you knew better because you know His Word. 
You've heard his word preached to you every Sunday. God knows who you are. And he knows where your heart is. And he knows when you're living into his will. So I just ask you to, to please be responsible Christians and understand how much he loves you. But those who love their father, just like children, those who love their father are obedient to him and obedient to his word and obedient to what he would call them to do and be. So I just pray that, that you would do all those things out of love, not out of fear. It's okay to fear God. I mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's okay to fear God. But more so, we need to love God and to, to, to do God's things and do God's will because we love him, because he loved us so much that he gave his son for us on the cross. Now, verse 34 starts talking about irresponsible shepherds. And I could go on for days about the people that I see on TV with mega churches and airplanes and, and all the money that they make. And, 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 this, and if you just listen to the words of the Bible here for just a moment, it's not hard to see what God thinks about those folks. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost. But with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains on every high hill. Yes, my flock was scattered over the whole face of the earth, and no one was seeking or searching for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became food for every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and I will cause them to cease feeding the sheep, and the shepherds will shall feed themselves no more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouths, that they may no longer be food for them. Strong words from God about the shepherd. You know, uh, I don't, I don't have anything against a pastor who, who earns his keep and, and that's his only source of income. But there are plenty of examples of people like me, like Paul, who was a tent maker, who had another job because he didn't want to burden the church. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's so many that are in it for the money. And, and they're not in it to win souls or to save lives. And there's some pretty, pretty harsh words in here about who we are and who we should be and how we should reach out to people. I, uh, we know that Jesus is the true shepherd. I'm gonna go over to uh, Acts 20 and verse 28. And this is some words related to the same subject. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all your flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. This is Paul speaking. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I will, they did not cease to warn everyone every night with day with tears. So now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have covered no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided my necessities and for those who were with me. So what he's saying is he worked for everything that he had and the church didn't provide anything for him. But he knew the day was coming when wolves would come into the church and those wolves would come and fleece the, the people of the church to fleece the flock I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of Lord Jesus that he said it is more blessed to give than receive so when you think about Paul in his life what an amazing example of someone 
who didn't want to be a burden on the church. Now, in back in Ezekiel 33, there's a parallel. I'm sorry, Ezekiel 34. We're just about to get to this God, the true shepherd. I'll go ahead and read that, and then we're going to jump over to John chapter 10, and we'll end this thing today. In Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11, it says, For thus says the Lord God, Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. Jesus is going to look for us. He said he'd leave the 99 to find the one. As a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day, he is among his scattered sheep. So will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places that they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. We're living in a cloudy and dark day right now. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them to their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and the valleys and in the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in good pasture and their fold shall be on high mountains of Israel. There they shall lie down in good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I'll feed my flock and I'll make them lie down. We remember Psalm 23. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. There's the idea when you listen to that. That when a preacher gives, when he feeds the flock, the word of God in its pure form, not watered down, that there's contentment to be found. A kind of contentment that can only come from understanding God and His Word. It's something that you can trust in His promises. You can trust in what He'll do in your life. You can trust Him to walk beside you in all these things. But it only comes from studying God's Word and taking it literally to heart. And, and I think right now in these times, we need to be ultra aware in these end times of the false prophets and the pastors that are just fleecing the people. We need to be very aware that God has a purpose for men of God. And those ministries will not necessarily grow to be ginormous or anything like that. But the people in those ministries will be will grow in faith and they'll grow in ways that, that they can't grow in those other places. You know, the, the job of the pastor more than any other is to pray for his flock, to study God's word, to share it with them, to feed them of that and to not lose any, to go out and find those that are lost. And, and that is the, is the true job of the pastor. And I know that there are a lot of people that say, well, it, it's hospital visits, it's all these other things. No, if there's a person in the church who could be trained and has a merciful type heart, who's someone who, who, who goes out and, and can do that, well, sure the pastor, there's time he should go. But you have to empower the church. You have to empower the flock with your word. And I, and I just pray that the Lord would allow God to raise up leaders because part of this sermon today, I believe, is understanding that we need to raise up leaders in our own little church here. The pastor can't do it all. He's like Paul, he's off working, making tents sometimes. But at the same time, I truly believe when we get past this COVID-19 thing and the church has come back together, there's great opportunity for people to step up in faith and lead the church of the future. It's the time, it's time, to get, it's time to get down to business. It's time to become a worker for the Lord, one of my favorite songs we have in our little church here. And Lord, I just ask you this morning to, to touch people's hearts and fill them with the Holy Spirit and give them the desire to serve like that, to take on the responsibility of leading in the times that, like these because there's no greater satisfaction that can ever be found, no greater contentment can ever be found than walking with the Lord and doing what he's called you to do. And he will. He will gift you with whatever you need to be able to do those things. So I'm going to close with what it says in John chapter 10 about Jesus. You know, Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That is all about the contentment of knowing God and walking with God. And the only way you're ever going to be content is to find that contentment. And it's offered freely through Jesus Christ. And so we all have one great good shepherd, and that's Jesus. And here in, in John chapter 10 it says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the she sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And he brings out his own sheep, 
as he goes out before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The only way to know God's voice is from to know this book. God will speak to you through his word in greater ways than any other prophetic thing that might be going on in the world today. Some guy who says he knows it all, he prophesies. Well, this is prophecy. Sharing God's word, just like Ezekiel did, is prophecy. It says, they will go out before him, the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. If you know God's word, and it's written on your heart, false prophets, false teachers, bad preachers, you name it, they cannot lead you astray because you know that the, what they're telling you is not to God's word. And they will not, you, sh you should not even be able to follow the voice of the stranger no matter how, no matter how tricky he might be. And then Jesus said in, in verse seven, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ is about a better life, both now and in eternity. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling he who is not the shepherd, when he does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees. You, you hear that? The hireling. Someone who's paid to watch the sheep. Someone who has no vested interest in their livelihoods, in their lives. I want you to think about that when you start talking about these ultra wealthy pastors. They've got nothing to lose when to lose one person. But a true pastor worries about every single person. He worries about their soul. He also worries about their physical and their financial and their spiritual and all that. We worry about their soul because that is what we're here for is to, to comfort them, to guide them, to instruct them, to lead them. And so Jesus is saying that the hireling is not someone who would lay down their life for their sheep like he did. There's only one good shepherd. There are some good shepherds like in the world, but they're not the good shepherd. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Verse 25, it says, I told you and you do not believe the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. So we live in a world that's a little chaotic right now, a little confusing. It's very difficult to preach even in these circumstances because you know, you're led by the Holy Spirit to preach on a subject and you question, even I question sometimes what I'm called to preach about. This morning's message was out of just pure obedience of what God told me to talk about. And I pray that someone out there was able to gather something, maybe, maybe they're Maybe their pastor is someone who's led them down the wrong road and they've been, the Holy Spirit's been tugging at them to, to make a change. You know, there was a time when we wouldn't allow situations to get out of control in churches where pastors would do things and, and the response was swift. But you can't live or do things like that and, and people were replaced and we weren't worried about offending anyone or, you know, there just wasn't even an issue. We were worried about offending God. And I, and I just pray that as we go through these times that people are not misled. I don't want to see anyone suffer because somebody was a bad leader and they led them down the wrong road. Lord, I just, 
I, I'm just thankful that I got this morning to share this message and let us have a quick prayer. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this time. I know that it's, it's difficult to preach about really my job. I'm preaching about people just like me. You know, and it's not like I'm a part of some club where we, we all hang out together and we do things together because we're pastors. It's not necessarily the way it works. But, we, but I do understand that we, if you truly are a child of God, you're also called to preach God's word. You're also called to share with others. And I just pray, Lord, that we would become more effective every day. You know, the laborers are few, but man, the harvest is plentiful. So Lord, give us more laborers every day. Give us the words that we need to have to, to, to create the harvest, Lord. Give us all the tools that we need to be your flock and to lead others to become a part of your flock. I just ask you, Lord, for a spirit of, of just intuition and be able to see what's going on in this world and to be able to read those folks that are really misleading folks and help those folks also to have the ability to discern and know when they're being misled. Lord, I, I, we, we, are, we live in troubled times, yes we do, but we have a God who's bigger than anything that's going on and we have a sovereign God who knows where we're all at in this situation. We have a God who can heal every single person no matter what their problem or situation might be, including COVID-19. Lord, I just ask you to help us to, be, to stand strong in our faith and to believe on you and to walk in your ways and to share your ways, your gospel, your truth, and your hope and your grace and your love that can only come through Jesus Christ. I just ask you, Lord, that we all become laborers for the field, workers for the Lord. Help us to be those people that make a great change during these times because people need to know you right now more than ever. People are even starting to listen a little bit more than ever. They're starting to pay a little more attention. And Lord, I just ask you that your message would get through strong and loud and clear and touch hearts and change lives. Lord, in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.